Welcome to Lesson 4, Setup Basics of the Getting Started series. In this video, we'll cover just enough setup to get you started on entering steel into a project. By default, SDS2 is set up for a standard USA project. From the main menu, I will launch the Setup Job or Fabrication options. Remember, as stated in prior videos, setup is critical to the success of the project and you'll want to get it correct out of the box. It is the first task to be done on the project. Generally, once setup is done, you will not make changes to the setup unless absolutely necessary. Another tip is to have only one or two people that are responsible for the setup. You do not want unauthorized people making changes to the setup during the project. Think of setup not only as the brains of the operation, but also as general rules applied to the project. Within the model, you can make changes to the rules applied to specific members in the project while still maintaining the system's automation. When launched from the main menu, the project setup will consist of fabricator and job information. The fabricator information, for the most part, consists of settings that pertain to what the specific fabricator requires, particularly concerning drawing presentation. And the job settings pertain to specifics that pertain to the project and model, but this line is not always so distinct. At the bottom of the screen, you see an option to either print the fabricator or job data. This is useful to check the setup or to keep a copy record for future use. The fabricator settings are in the first column on the left and the job settings are on the two columns on the right. When you attend the training, each field will be covered. I'm only going to change a few fields for this project. Design criteria is where I will determine the design method used for the project. For this project, we're going to use the ASD 13th edition. For the development of the loads, I'm going to leave the 50% uniform distributed load. If I did not want SDS2 to build the connection to satisfy the load, but to just build a connection from the setup values, I could check the minimum setup connection. This turns off the comparative analysis that SDS2 uses to design and develop connections. Bolt design criteria is where you determine the bolts for the project at least one of the locations where you can set the bolt information to be used on the project. Schedule of minimum for structural members and the schedule of minimum for single plate shear connections is where you will set the minimum bolt rows per section depth, bolt diameters and plate thickness data for the system to start to develop the connections. Standard Fabricator Connection contains all the specifics about the connections. I will open up a few for your viewing. Example of data set would be, for example, the section size, as you can see here, or other data such as when to stagger the bolts. Zone and Sequence will allow me to set up erection zones and sequences. On this project, I'm going to have five sequences from 1A to 5A in Zone A. When you tab or move to the next field, you validate the data input into the previous field. It is very good to get this data before you begin the project, especially if you are breaking marks apart by sequence or zone. Let's go ahead and add a few of the sequences to Zone B and then place them all back into Zone A. The plate definition schedule applies to adding plates to columns. SDS2 only designs connections from steel to steel. The plate definition schedule is used to add in plates such as column base plates or other engineer specified cap or base plates. One helpful tip is to think that the orientation is based off a wide flange material with the web at zero degrees or horizontal. 
The anchor hole diameter set by default is the latest values as per the ASD 9th LRFD1 Volume 2 1992 AISC edition and above. These values can be changed if the drawing specifies otherwise. Many fabricators do prefer the smaller oversized holes from the ASD 9th 18, 1989 edition since they do not require plate washers. Member and material piece marking options is where you will determine shipping marks, the main material marks, and submaterial marking systems. For this project, I'll break the major shipping marks apart by sequence, have the main material assume the shipping mark, reuse submaterial marks that are no longer being used on the project, and leave the default prefixes for the piece marks and descriptions. As you can see, there are plenty of fields to be covered, but this will get you started on a project. This concludes our brief look at setup.